Hi there and welcome to another Lifetime Training video. Today's video is going over the parent-child setup for Lifetime. So on the left hand side here is my main computer. This is the computer I'm going to run Lifetime from. It's going to hit the main loop. On the right hand side is another computer and Lifetime isn't running on it yet but we're going to set it up to be the child computer. So in order to do this the way you have to start is first on your primary computer have everything ready the way you want it. So have the event created, the track created, your drivers, etc. You can go you can see here that when I click on heats and mains, I've got some races and things ready to go. So you need to create all this first on your primary computer. The next thing you have to do is make a backup of it. So you can do that by clicking on the question mark in the upper right corner under the help area and creating a backup. Make sure you set up where you're um, going to put the backup in a place that you can get it. So typically this might be your desktop or whatever, um, maybe a USB stick because then you're going to have to move this over to your child computer. And once you have that set and ready to go, go ahead and hit create backup. It's going to tell you that you're going to momentarily be down in broadcasting, but you should be setting this up prior to doing anything that um, you're going to need to do, or at least before you start the, the qualifying round. So you hit yes to this. Uh, it's telling you that I've already made a backup, so it's going to overwrite it. That's okay. I'll go ahead and make the backup file. It's going to make a file that's going to look something like this. It's going to be your username dash and number dot BAK. That's the file you're going to want to grab. And at this point, you should take that file and on a USB stick or over the network or whatever, bring it over to this computer, your child computer. And I've already done that here, and here's my backup, this dot BAK file. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is on the primary computer in the upper right corner there is this parent child icon. Click it and turn it on. So now your primary computer is ready to go. It's waiting for a child to connect to it. Um, and once it's connected you'll be able to run these things in parallel. So now I'm going to switch over to my child computer with my backup file here. And what I need to do first is I need to move the backup file to the database folder in LiveTime. That's normally going to be C program files LiveTime database. If you're running a 64-bit computer, it'll be C program files with an x86 around it, LiveTime databases. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to move this backup file into this folder. I'll minimize this. And the next step will be to actually open LiveTime. So I'll open up LiveTime. But instead of just logging in, I'm going to click this advanced section in the lower left. You're going to want to check the login as child workstation and connect to a parent. The next thing you're going to want to do is you need to tell it the IP address of the parent computer. We've made it easy to, to know what the IP address is. If you take a look at the parent, it's listed right here, this 192.168.1.5. This is going to, this is going to uh, vary based on your network and what's going on. But these two computers do need to be on the same network and need to be able to talk to one another. You can test this by hitting the test button on the child computer. It will tell you that you can communicate with the parent. I still need to log in, or at least type in login and password. And this is the same login and password that you would use on your parent computer too. You cannot have a parent-child relationship between uh, different logins or different users. It needs to be under the same account. Additionally, I'm going to want to check this box to overwrite the local database with the new one. So what this is going to do is that upon logging in, it's going to take this backup, it's going to restore it on this computer, and then it's going to connect to the parent. So I'll go ahead and hit login now. And it's doing its work. It's taking that backup and it's bringing it forward. And you're going to see this message. The backup database has been restored. One, a couple of things it's going to do for you, though. In a lot of cases where you're doing a parent-child relationship, the child computer might be running off of a different loop. It probably might also print to different printers. Uh, it also might be saving different files. So we clear that for you when you restore. So you'll have to remember it gives you a reminder, but um, in some cases um, you might want to hook it up to the same loop. In some cases you might want to do different loops to so have a completely redundant system. Um, so I'll hit OK to this and Lifetime is going to launch here on the child computer and when it does in the top section it's actually going to show the title bar in red. It's telling you this is in child mode. So it's kind of warning you, hey if you start a race or you change a race or you do something different on the parent computer the child computer is going to mimic it. So really this is meant to be kind of a set and forget kind of a thing unless you need to make edits. So at this point I'll, on the child computer I'm going to hit, well let me actually move it back up. 
Before you continue, a couple of reminders once more. You're going to notice the transponder here, or the decoder piece rather, is in red. If you click on it, make sure you set it up to, to hook up to the, whatever USB serial port or Ethernet port you want. In addition, you're also going to want to make sure that the printer and secondary printer and all of your file settings are here. By default, nothing is selected when you restore it, so it's going to do nothing. This is on purpose because if we left it the same way and the, and the parent and child ran, you'd get two copies of something to the printer and you know it, it would be redundant and you'd probably get more printouts and things than you want. But set it up as you want and then uh, go ahead and go right to race. You'll notice here on the left hand side of the parent, I'll go to race as well. And they should be the same because you restored the database with the same races and the same heats on the child computer. But what you'll also notice is that, let's say I change this to race 2. Okay, the child computer moved to race 2 as well. Back to race 1, the child changes to 1. If I start the race, it starts the race on both computers. If I do a false start on the parent, it false starts on both computers. So now they stay in sync. So that's really all there is to it. Now you have a parent and child. They're both running independently, but they have the same racer data, and you can go ahead and do it. If for some reason the parent computer crashes, um, you know, the hard drive fails or something bad happens to it and you can't restore it, all you have to do on the child computer is close it and re-log in. Don't select parent or child, just re-log in normally and you'll have all the same data and you can continue on with your race program and be able to continue to use it off of this computer. One final reminder about this, let's say your round is over and you're going to create a round two. You have to do it in both places, or you can close up the child computer, do the changes you want, and do another backup restore on the child, fire it back up, and you're ready for round two. You'll do the same thing for any subsequent rounds and the main. So hopefully this is enough to get you going on setting up parent-child mode. Um, feel free to you know, reach out to Lifetime support if you have any questions, and good luck with your race.